Welcome. You're listening to Resilience Radio. Today we're talking about acupuncture with Dr. Carrie Boyle. I'm your host, Irvin Eisenberg, owner of Resilience Occupational Therapy. The opinions on this show are not necessarily shared by me. I really like to showcase a variety of different perspectives and not everything will resonate with you. Additionally, um, this is not meant to be medically diagnostic or prescriptive in any way. In any case, today's guest is Dr. Kerry Boyle. She is an acupuncturist and owner of two acupuncture clinics, one in Montpelier and one in Williston. Great to have you on today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So I wondered if you could start us off with telling us what acupuncture is. Sure. Acupuncture is one part of traditional Chinese medicine. Chinese medicine incorporates nutrition, massage therapy, herbal medicine, lifestyle recommendations, and acupuncture. Acupuncture involves the insertion of fine, single-use stainless steel needles to acupuncture points throughout the body. There's over 400 points all over the body. And there is pretty amazing biochemical changes that happen in the body with acupuncture. When the needle is first inserted into the body, the body responds thinking that it's a foreign object and it does everything it can do and would do with a foreign object to try to push it out. So there's an increase of circulation of blood, there's a reduction in an inflammatory response, and there's a natural relaxation of muscles, tendons, and ligaments that happen when the acupuncture needles go into the body. This causes a nice relaxation response. Dopamine, endorphins, serotonin are all released from the brain during acupuncture, and it's why people really enjoy it. So I'm a little confused by why your body's response to a foreign body would be to relax the muscle. Could you speak to that? Happy to. Think about when you get a splinter. If you leave it in the body, it's going to try to push it out. It thinks it's a foreign object. And the way it does that is it has to relax the muscles around it to try to push it out. And then it increases the flow of blood to that area. And so the response is relaxed muscles relaxed tendons, relaxed ligaments, and a natural increase of circulation of blood, which is really helpful for lots of conditions, including pain. Okay. Um, we've had other acupuncturists on the show, and we've often discussed the difference between acupuncture, which tends to be used as the umbrella term that really includes all of Chinese medicine. Do you consider yourself an acupuncturist or more accurately a Chinese medicine practitioner or I consider myself an ambassador of Chinese medicine, and that means making the medicine as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. And that means people understand acupuncture. So absolutely, I'm an acupuncturist. And then once people come in for a treatment, I'm happy to provide education about the other branches of Chinese medicine and give them lifestyle tips, nutrition, herbal medicine. Uh, but absolutely, I'm an acupuncturist. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and education, what brought you to acupuncture and a little bit of your journey? Sure. So I started my journey with acupuncture from um, the Northeast Kingdom in Vermont, where I was working in a health food store and learning about natural healing and um, vegetarian diets and um, holistic living and decided that I wanted to help my community. I found out about a school in Seattle, Washington called Bastyr University and thought it would be a great place to get a nutrition degree to learn more about whole food nutrition. While finishing up my uh, undergraduate classes in order to get into the master's degree for acupuncture, I took a Tai Chi class. And this changed everything for me. I found out about um, the circulation of energy or chi. I could feel it in my hands. And I was so impressed and amazed by the fundamentals and philosophy of uh, energy in Chinese medicine that I switched my plan. And instead of studying nutrition, I went into their acupuncture program at Bastyr University. It's a three and a half year program to complete your master's degree. Um, and then after that was when the fun really started. I got my license in Washington state and uh, wasn't really ready to come back to start my practice in Vermont yet and heard about some folks trying to start acupuncture on board cruise ships. And so I took a big risk and jumped on board a cruise ship heading to South America with 
pretty much not much um, handbook or information about what we were going to be doing and launched the acupuncture department on board a celebrity cruise line. This ended up being a, a pretty fun journey for the next three or four years where I was part of um, the corporate team that launched acupuncture on board over 100 cruise ships all over the world. And so that was a great way for me to travel and see the world and also practice a lot of acupuncture. We were um, we would talk about it by having lectures every day and then we would provide the acupuncture right on board the ship. And I learned how to get pretty quick results because I only had the benefit of seeing patients for you know a week or two weeks at most. And um, I really needed them to see results quickly. And so that's how I continue to practice. I like to treat pain management and I like, to, I like people to experience results really quickly. Um, and then that brought me back to Vermont. I was, I was done with my traveling the world after about four years. Um, and I landed at um, Central Vermont and the doctors at Montpelier Integrated Family Health really wanted uh, acupuncture included in, in their primary care practice. And they offered to um, allow me to rent space. Um, that was in 2009, um, and since then, my practice has grown to now employ five acupuncturists um, and a number of support staff, massage therapy, and naturopathic physicians into two offices. And you have a, so you have five acupuncturists between the two offices? Yeah, we do. Do you, I know there's a lot of different styles of acupuncture. Um, there's there's sort of the traditional Chinese medicine, there's classical Chinese medicine, and then of course there's um, there's Japanese versions of it, and I'm sure there's way more than I've just stated there. What what school do, do you, or style do you think of yourself and your clinic as most embodying? We're primarily a traditional Chinese medicine clinic, or TCM. Um, so that means we're, we're primary care or we're, we're um, general acupuncture treatment, uh, family health. We treat everyone from pediatrics all the way on up. Um, we, uh, between the five of us, we have specialty areas. Um, so one of my specialty areas is within women's health and fertility, pregnancy management. Uh, we have other acupuncturists that specialize in neurology, digestion, uh, we do have a Japanese style acupuncturist on on the, in the practice. We also have a pediatric specialist. Okay. So for someone who is nervous about the idea of needles being inserted into them, what, what do you what do you usually say to sort of alleviate that those initial um, reactions to the idea of acupuncture? Well, if there's anyone who understands it, it's me because I'm a total needle phobe. In fact, when I first went to my interview at Bastyr to uh, begin my studies with acupuncture, they asked me to talk about my experience having it, especially 20 years ago, people were getting into acupuncture that had had amazing healing experiences themselves with it. But I had never had it because I was totally scared to. And so when they asked me about my experience, I had to tell them I've never had it. And they said, how do you know this is something you want to do? Um, and I, I just, I felt like I just knew I was so committed to the philosophy of it. I, I understood it. And they said to me, well, you're going to have to be practicing on uh, each other for the next three and a half years. So I figured I better get over it pretty quick. Um, I still have a hard time with blood draws. I have a hard time um, even with my recent COVID vaccine, uh, but our needles are the size of a hair. Acupuncture needles are so small. Um, there's no blood involved. There's nothing going in the body or coming out of the body. Um, some people like to see them before we do the insertion just to see how small they are compared to what they might be thinking in their mind. So that's one technique I do. Um, the other thing I do is distraction. So you're brain can only process so many things at once. So if I can maybe use my nail and touch around the area before I insert it, um, rarely do people even feel the insertion. So it just takes trying it, getting over that first fear and anxiety. And then I can speak from experience that once you try it, you realize it does not hurt at all. And it's actually quite comfortable. And how deep is the needle going in? The needle depths vary depending on body size and the location. So 
For example, if somebody has sciatica and I'm inserting a needle into their hip, it's going to have to go to um, a depth of an inch or two inches, as opposed to if I put it in the ear. Um, there's just no muscle or fat in that area. So the depth there is fractions of a millimeter. Also, people's bodies are, of course, different sizes. So they're going to go to different depths depending on a person's size. Um, and then the direction or the angle of the needling varies depending on what part of the body, which is why you always want to see a qualified licensed acupuncturist for acupuncture, uh, because we're highly trained at knowing these angles. So when we're inserting them over organ systems, you know, we know exactly what angle to insert the needle. So in being the owner of of two clinics, when you're when you're hiring people, it seems like you have a variety of different types of acupuncturists under in the clinic. What are you looking for when you? What's your quality control in your employees? Being an acupuncturist, and to us, the most important thing is that they want to be a team player and they understand the uh, philosophy of integrative health. Uh, we have case reviews. We share patients all the time. I think our patients really benefit from the fact that they have multiple acupuncturists that can work on their case. If they have a complicated health condition, we consult with each other. Um, and just the simple fact of scheduling becomes a lot easier when you have uh, five professionals schedules available to you. Um, so some people really enjoy going between acupuncturists. So that means a um, team member of ours has to be really comfortable working in a team. Um, some, some, some people want to work independently, and that wouldn't be a good match for, for our clinic because we really are a small family that get together when we can and, um, you know, and really enjoy the integrative part of, of the clinic. And you said you have a naturopath and massage therapist as well? Yeah, we do. Where, what's their role in the family? Crucial, absolutely crucial. Um, so we've been offering massage therapy within the clinic for at least five plus years or so. I'm also a, a massage therapist. Um, I completed my massage therapy training while I was in acupuncture school. So I refer to massage therapy frequently. We uh, provide your traditional relaxation massage, but we also provide specific medical you know, spot massage for as short as 25 minutes. So I'll have someone who comes in for a uh, shoulder pain and then I'll speak with the massage therapist and say exactly which muscles I worked on, what I found, ask her to please work on those specific muscles. Um, and then you know, she can report back to me her findings. So again, just more about integrative care. Um, and then the naturopath is a crucial part um, because being a primary care physician, our naturopath is able to um, bring some people into the clinic who aren't able to access our services because of insurance limitations. Uh, so like in Vermont, Medicaid covers naturopathic visits where it doesn't cover acupuncture. So there was a whole segment of our Vermont population that was having a hard time accessing our services for acupuncture. Um, but now I'm really happy to be able to invite them in to have naturopathic care uh, because we can accept that. Uh, our naturopath, you know, does blood draws. So sometimes there's limitations with the diagnostics of traditional Chinese medicine. And because I don't do blood draws, um, I need to send patients to her and she'll do a blood draw and, and give me uh, the blood the blood count and then we can review that together and then I can base my acupuncture and herbal medicine recommendations off of off of that diagnostics. Yeah. So you mentioned insurance and are there any insurance that are covering the acupuncture? Oh yeah, lots. Um, in, so we're in Vermont, of course. So we take Blue Cross Blue Shield and MVP United. Um, about 50% of our clinic is insurance coverage. Um, and we also will build out a network for anyone who has insurance, or excuse me, anyone who has acupuncture on their insurance plan will attempt to get them coverage for it. Uh, we also accept um, veterans. So we have a lot of folks coming through from the Veterans Association that are able to get acupuncture, um, car accidents, motor vehicle, uh, workers comp, all those include acupuncture generally. So if people don't know if their plan includes acupuncture, they should probably reach out to their insurance company and see, or 
Yeah, it can get confusing. So we have a, um, a PDF file right on the homepage of our website to uh, print out a questionnaire to ask your insurance companies because it really varies. There's co-pays, co-insurance, there's um, sometimes a limitation of how many visits they'll cover per year. The years sometimes start October instead of January. Um, sometimes your plan is shared with PT or OT visits. So it's really important to get all that information, um, especially if you don't have a plan that we work with all the time, like somebody who has, you know, who works for the state of Vermont, we're really familiar with their plan because we, we uh, see folks on that plan all the time. So we can answer all those questions for, for them. Um, but if you have an out-of-state plan and something we don't work with all the time, it's best to call the 800 number on the back of the card, use our PDF file on our homepage and ask all those questions. So what is your interaction that you're, you're part of a, you're located near a medical clinic, a, a conventional um, Western medical clinic, <laughs> not to imply yours isn't. Um, what is your relationship with, um, with our medical system? So we were invited to open our acupuncture clinic by the medical director at the time, Jeremiah Eckhaus at Montpelier Integrated Family Health, which is a primary care practice of CVMC, Central Vermont Medical Center, which is now of course of UVM. And in 2009, they really wanted us there to be able to refer their patients. Um, and so we developed a, as much of an integrated um, relationship as we could being private practices. Um, so we would have regular meetings where we would get together and discuss the different services that we provide and learn more about um, how we could inter refer with each other, um, the best types of patients that uh, respond the best to our services for each other. Uh, we also at that time had a nutritionist and a massage therapist renting space out of the office. So we would get together and have as, as much of an integrated relationship as we could. As we've grown, our meetings are less frequent, especially with, of course, COVID, um, but we do a lot of just electronic communications and um, fax referrals um, and even just still meeting downstairs um, within the primary care office to run across questions we might have about a shared patient. Um, in addition to that, we have worked within the cancer center at uh, CVMC. Um, we have also worked uh, shadowing at um, Northeast Reproductive Medicine, which is a fertility clinic in Colchester. So we really strive to be as um, much of a complementary service as we can be to Western medical care. Um, and I think we do a pretty good job at communicating to patients and to communicating to their care providers to create that that relationship of an integrative care model for them. Okay, so could you um, speak to some of the possible misunderstandings that people have of, of acupuncture? What do you wish everyone knew or, <laughs> yeah, what do you wish everyone knew or what, what's sort of one of the biggest myths? Hmm, let's see, we already talked about that it hurts, so we got that out of the way. Um, I think one of the biggest myths is that acupuncture is just for pain. Yes, we're very well known for treating pain because we treat it quickly and without side effects and effectively. Um, but acupuncture and all of traditional Chinese medicine as a whole is a complete medical system. So just like Western medicine is a complete medical system, Chinese medicine is a complete medical system. And so we can provide at least some kind of complementary relief to most conditions. Um, not a cure, of course, but we treat folks with um, cancer. We treat folks with digestion issues, um, upper respiratory conditions. So I'd say the biggest myth is that somebody will come in with a pain condition and not even mention that they have insomnia or irritable bowel syndrome or anxiety because they just didn't realize that not only can we treat that effectively, but because we're looking at the body holistically, we can treat it at the same time as treating their pain. And sometimes it even helps us with understanding the root cause of their pain by understanding the complete, the complete picture of their health. So we always want to know about all the systems because we might be able to help them. Yeah, it makes me think that just our, our medical system, it's getting 
better in some ways with this, but it tends to be so reductionist that people are used to, if you're, <laughs> if you're going to the dentist, you're not telling them about your foot pain. If you're, if you're going to the orthopedist, you're not telling them about your digestion, that, that people tend to, and medical professionals often are rushed. So we, people have a tendency um, in my practice, um, I'm looking at posture and, and, and the fascia and, and their overall balance of tissue. And I, it always surprises me that people don't decide that it's not pertinent to, to tell me that they had a breast reduction surgery until, <laughs> until it comes up more in conversation later on after I've been working with them. And it's like, that's, that's a pertinent medical history for thinking about scar tissue and balance and such. And it's, we have a tendency to really, as consumers of healthcare, be very, um, have sort of very categories and, and re pull only from that category from that practitioner. And I, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. I mean, even in pain, some folks can just talk about their ankle pain and not even tell me about their knee or their hip. It's really connected in that, in that example, but yeah, the whole body is connected. So we'd like to know the whole history. Do you uh, have anything else you would like to share about um, your clinics? Well, our goal is to try to get as many people as possible access to acupuncture, which is why we take all the insurance. Um, and we're hoping that um, Medicare is going to start to include acupuncturists into um, Medicare reimbursement plans. Uh, but really, if people want acupuncture covered, um, and we've done, I've done a lot of work on this. I've been the past president of the Vermont Acupuncture Association. Um, I had a nonprofit for a while going called People for Acupuncture, just trying to uh, go to our state legislators and really advocate for people getting access. Uh, but we need, we need the patients to do the advocacy work as well. So um, if, you, if people don't have access to acupuncture, it's really important to talk to their legislators about it being a important part of their uh, medical treatment plan um, and that we need more insurance coverage. We need a mandate for acupuncture to be included in Vermonters healthcare. Okay. And do you have any um, closing thoughts or advice you'd like to leave people with? Well, having acupuncture as part of a regular maintenance care and wellness plan is a great idea. Um, every time we insert an acupuncture needle, there's more white blood cells produced. So just for that reason alone, immunity, not to mention the stress relief that happens with acupuncture, it's a great idea. Um, even if you're checking in seasonally, so four times a year have a treatment because you're feeling great, that's a good idea. But there's nothing better than we can do for ourselves than the basics and remembering to drink water, stay hydrated, get your eight hours of sleep and to breathe deeply and relax. That'll keep you out of the acupuncturist office and as healthy as possible. Great. Thank you for coming on today. It's been fun learning with you. Thanks for having me. That was Dr. Carrie Boyle speaking about acupuncture. If you enjoyed this episode, you can leave a review on the podcatcher of your choice and subscribe so that you can get a new interview every week. This has been Resilience Radio. I hope you enjoyed.